Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In this video I'm going to tell you why we are doing so many recalls in the Boeing 737 under normal operations. And of course you could say, well, we do a recall during the before taxi procedure, we do one after takeoff, during the 10 checks, we do them before we start the descent, we do them in the before landing checklist, and so on and so on and so on. Now, one could of course say that we just do them because we are verifying that there is nothing wrong with the system and that we have not forgotten about any failures. And that is partially true, that we want to make sure that we haven't forgotten about failures, but there is also something to the master warning system of the Boeing 737 and how the entire system operates. For example, the 737's warning system is designed not to show the pilot failures that are not that important. For example, if we look at the modern definition of a warning system and what the law requires airplane manufacturers to do, then of course we have our warnings, which are the red thingies, which require immediate action and threaten the safety. Then we have cautions, which are the amber things we get indicated, and they do not immediately re require the crew's attention, but they will require the crew's attention and will have a safety effect if they are not being dealt with. And then you have advisories, which, for example, might be marked in a green text on the Airbus ECAM or a white text on the Boeing ICAS. And those are basically things that are good for the crew to know, but they do not require crew action. That may include, for example, the seatbelt sign that is turned on, which is shown to the pilot on the airplane. Now, in the 737, however, things are a little bit different because the warning system goes back to a day where the modern regulation has not existed yet. And in the 737's warning system, if you press the recall button, it does not only bring up any warning that you have previously cancelled, but it can also bring up new warnings that have previously just not been shown to you. Now, what do I mean with that? Let's have a look at a practical example. You can see I'm doing a recall at the moment and nothing lights up. So we don't have any failure indicated. But let's now go into the failures menu and let's say we want to fail, for example, a GPS system. So we go to the navigation, let's select failure, GPS right, active, yes. Now, of course, we get the GPS right invalid message on the FMC. But apart from that, if we look to the overhead panel, we do not get the GPS light illuminated. And the reason for that is that a redundant system has failed that will not affect the safety of the flight. However, if we now do a recall, we get the master caution IRS, which tells us we need to look at the IRS panel. And then if we look up here, we actually see the GPS light illuminated. If we go ahead and cancel this master caution now, so if we press the reset button, the light is going to extinguish once again. In other words, the recalls that we do don't only provide to bring up anything we may previously have forgotten, but they might as well show us a new warning that has not previously been indicated to us because it would not have significantly affected the safety of flight. Now, there are a couple different systems in the airplane that operate like this. And the GPS was an example of this, because we have two GPSs available and the airplane relies on neither. Only the GPS invalid message on the FMC would alert us to this. But there are no immediate consequences to this. Other systems that may include being shown only on a recall are the pack lights, which are going to illuminate only if one of the pack controller fails, but if, as long as the standby controller takes over and there is no deterioration to the ability of the pack to work correctly, we are not going to get a warning light for this, or a caution light. The caution is only going to come up on recall, which is then the airplane telling us, hey pilots, there is something wrong, but you don't need to deal with it immediately. Or you don't need to deal with it at all until you're back on the ground and engineering can have a look at the airplane. So, 
there you got it. That's why we're doing so many recalls in the Boeing 737. I hope that you found this one interesting. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below what you think of this kind of how a warning system operates. By the way, this particular warning system is also part of the reason why the 737 MAX 10 has now been delayed significantly or might even be cancelled because under modern law this is no longer a system that a newly certified aircraft can operate under but Boeing had an exemption which expired at the end of 2022 and therefore they now need to decide what they're going to do with the MAX 10. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this and that you've learned something, so do let me know in the comments below if you knew this already or if this was something new to you. If you want to support the channel, you can do so using the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description below or by becoming a channel member, which is going to get you exclusive access to new videos before they are released to the general public. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to welcoming you all again very soon.